guys, today I'm filming my spring makeup must-haves for 2020. If you guys did not see my winter makeup must-haves, I'll have it linked in the cards, and I just was not feeling my winter makeup this year. I wasn't into cool tones and mauves, and I was really happy for my winter makeup time to be over and on to spring. Now, I'm a very basic bee. I've got a ton of things here. They are all pastels. I just love pastels. I cannot help it. It might be basic. I also think it's very classic spring and I'm really excited to use these products here. And if you're on from my seasonal makeup must-haves, basically I show you products for eyes, cheeks, lips, and nails. And I do sometimes mention things that were limited edition or discontinued. That's not to rub it in your face. It's just to remind you guys to pull them out of your collection if you have them. And I'm simply just telling you about the products that I plan on using over these next three months. I do wear my makeup seasonally. Obviously, as you can tell by these videos, I count March, April, and May as the three months that I use my spring makeup. I am late filming this video, but I've already been wearing my spring makeup for the rest of this month. I'm filming this video on March 21st. And I'm even more excited about this video because I'm gonna be filming this in collaboration with my friend, Steph, from It's Just Steph. She has such an amazing channel. She is also a project painter, and she does do a lot of reviews on her channel, which are my two favorite things to watch. I'm not a tutorial person once in a while it depends who it is but I am all about those project pans and the reviews so that's why Steph's channel is so amazing for me I've been following Steph for a couple years now but last year is when I really fell in love with her channel and every time a video of hers came on my subscription box I would click on it right away she has just such a great personality I love her makeup looks I think she really knows how to accentuate her eyes and I just really really enjoy her videos I know you guys will as well and she's also a project painter that still likes to spoil her Herself with new products not just replacements so I always think that's really fun so please go watch her video and subscribe to her channel if you have come over here from Steph's channel thank you so so much for watching my video and I would love it if you guys would subscribe to my channel as well so without further ado let's just get into the products starting with eyes I have random single shadows I have my custom Z palette of shadows and I've got some pre-made palettes so starting with the random shadows I've got several ColourPop super shocks some of these are permanent some of these were limited edition the first one is flower shop it's a pearlized finish this is a beautiful shade it's like a turquoise but more on the green side it's similar to what I'm wearing on my lids today this is such a stunning color I absolutely love and then I've got some matte shades I'm going to show you these side by side because they're similar and I want you guys to be able to see the differences so this one is Belladonna Lily and this one is Snapdragon. So this one was limited, this one's permanent. So this one you can tell is lighter, more blue. This is darker and more green. I think that they're different enough to own both, but you probably don't need them both. For me, I do wear them in the same way. I don't think that the ColourPop mattes blend very well, so I tend to just wear them on the lid. And then really with all three of these kind of shades, I'll do what I did today where I pair them with some more warm browns and aren't too orangey. I'm using Anastasia Birkin and Bengal. Those are my go-to matte shades with these kind of colors on the lid. The other one I have is a purple. This is the shade Daddy. It's a really intense bright matte purple. It's a pressed pigment finish because this does stain the skin. This one is really hard to blend out, but again, packed on the lid and then for a transition crease using some matte purples, it does tend to look really nice. So I've got those shades. Then my other two go-to random singles would be the Stila Glitter and Glow Liquid Shadow in the shade Sea Siren, which is just a really beautiful pink duochrome to blue shift really stunning and then has to be that's a little bit warmer toned and this is one of the tarte chrome paint shadow pots and frosé which is similar to nars orgasm such a beautiful color i absolutely love wearing this one on the lid again with those same warm browns i should have brought them out to show them to you but ben gall and Berkman from anastasia are Go to transition and crease colors for me in the springtime especially. So then I'm going to show you the palettes. I'll save my custom palette for last. So for palettes, I really don't have a ton that I tend to reach for in the spring. I usually focus more on my 
single shadows, but the perfect palette for me for spring is the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. The packaging is just so gorgeous, of course. But then you have all of these beautiful shades in here, all of these different like matte, peachy, nectarine colors are so stunning and then you have these really nice shimmers to pop on the lid i don't love the pressed glitters but everything else in here i think is amazing looks absolutely stunning love love that palette that's definitely one of my favorite color pop palettes in general then something i got for christmas last year would be the huda beauty mercury retrograde palette and this is really like half neutrals half pastels so i won't be using a lot of the neutral colors but this row, these two rows really, of those, oh, excuse me, those two rows of the pastel shades, especially this row here, I'm so excited to create some looks with these. I saw some amazing looks when this palette came out, and I am excited to recreate them. So I'll be using about half of this palette this year. And the same with this next one. This is my Natasha Denona Coral Palette. So pricey, but it is so beautiful. So I will probably be using these three shades here, and then these two colors I'll save for more of the summer fall time. But I just think this is a really pretty palette. And you know, there are similar shades to these two in that ColourPop palette if you don't already have this one. But I want to make sure I get some good use out of this because it was very expensive so now let me show you my custom z palette i actually added a lot more shades than i had last year so that's exciting i've kind of got them set up in more of a pinky peach row purple row blue green and then i've got a bunch of mini shadows on the bottom again i'm just going to hold this up to the camera and then in the description box i will list all of the shades so here's what the shades look like in here i've got looksy color pop Makeup Geek, MAC, and down here, almost all of these little mini shades are ColourPop shadows, but then this one is from the Too Faced Carnival palette. And I do have the Divina Exploders in here. If you're looking for some good pastel liners, I've got some great recommendations for you. So this first one is a Steela Smudge Stick Waterproof Liner in Turquoise, I think this one is still available. It's a great formula and a really pretty shade. Then I've got two shades of the ColourPop Creme Gel Liners. These are incredible. I've actually used both of these up and repurchased them. So the mint color is Zulu. And I'm gonna show this one swatched next to that Stila because they are different. And I will swatch the other shade Prance, which is the Periwinkle Blue. So right here is the Stila. As you can tell, that one is richer and brighter. And then that ColourPop one is lighter, more minty. It's almost like if you, when we're comparing these two shades, how they're similar but different. That's really kind of like the same thing with those two liners. And then there is the Prance shade. All of those stay in the waterline very well and they're great accents. It's really an easy way for me to wear color when I'm going to work. These are really awesome. So next for cheek products, I have a bronzer and a contour as I always tell you guys in these videos, I do have several bronzers and contours and highlights in my collection. So I like to designate one or two for each season to make sure that I'm getting use out of all of them or most of them over this, like the past, 12 months, I've gotten a lot more bronzers and highlighters especially. So I have got one bronzer, one contour, and four highlighters that I want to be using this season. So for my bronzer, that would be the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I just have the original bronzer shade. I did just recently repress this one. I'm wearing it today. And it got even more pigmented when I repressed it. I love the butter bronzer. And this is a really nice shade match for me. Then for my contour, I'm using the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This is the original one, which I think is really nice because it's not too warm, it's not too cool. It does a great job. It's more of like that neutral color. And the Butter Bronzer is as well. The Light Bronzer is a little bit more warm tone. This is a little bit more neutral, which I think works really well with the pastel colors I have here. So those are go-tos. So for highlighters, like I said, I do have four. I have two more light, slightly warm champagne colors. And then I do have two that are on the warm pinky side, which is fun. Both of those are new to me and I'm really excited to wear those this year. So for the champagne -y colors, the first one is the Pixie Glowy Powder in London Luster. This is a little bit lighter and icier, but it is more warm tone, which is why I like it for spring. 
And similarly, but this one is not as light, this is Becca's Moonstone. This one is the shade that I'm wearing today. Absolutely gorgeous. Really easy to wear both of those on a daily basis. Love them. Then the two more fun highlights that are new to me would be another one from Becca. This is Lilac Geode. And this is just such a fun color. It's probably a little bit dark for me, but I think it can blend it out to make it work. Yeah, that's not bad. And it just has that like warm golden pink tone to it. A little bit of like a duochrome flash. So beautiful. And then similarly, I have got Tickle from Benefit. So this one I think is just maybe a little lighter. It's definitely a little more reflective. It almost is like a little more golden. I know you guys won't be able to see. I got some swatch like in the same place, but those are very similar. You definitely don't need them both, but it definitely looks like the Benefit is a little bit more golden while the Becca is a little bit more pink, but super beautiful and I'm really excited to get some good use out of those this season. So then on to blushes. I'm so excited for these. I mostly have a lot of peach blushes because those are my favorite, but I do have a few cool pinks as well and they're both from the Balm. These are blushes I'm I have my chopping block currently because I've, I've gone back and forth about decluttering these because I don't get a ton of use out of them, but I do tend to reach for them in the spring and I do sometimes want a pink blush, so I'll probably end up keeping them, but this first one is Down Boy from the Balm, which is more of that cool pink and it is matte. And then we have Argyle, which is one of the in stain blushes, which is more of a warm pink. It's not a peachy pink, but it is warmer in comparison and it's a little bit darker. It is also a matte finish. So those are my two true pink blushes. Then the rest of them are different kinds of peach, pinky peach, peachy pink, warm pinks. So the first one is the Balm Frat Boy, which was like my first Holy Grail favorite blush. Really, really beautiful. This is also a matte shade. I'm not really gonna be describing these very much because they're all very similar. Then we've got Becca's Flower Child, which has a little bit of a sheen to it. So beautiful. The Becca formula is really great. Then I hate the packaging on this because it's hard to open. This is one of the Ciate blushes in the shade Summer Love. I've got what I'm wearing today, which is Tarte's Captivating. Absolutely love that color. It's a matte finish. I've got two from Lorac. One of these I depotted from a Lorac cheek palette. So this one is Lorac Spectra and this is Lorac's Technicolor. So obviously this one is more pink compared to Technicolor. They're both a matte finish. Then I've got another warm pink. This is Illamasqua Naked Rose. Very, very pigmented. Then we have something that was limited edition and another one that's a little hard to open. This is the Too Faced Love Flush Blush in Funfetti, which has a bit of like a satin finish. Then we've got my newest blush that I'm really loving so far. This is Hourglass Dim Infusion and this is more of like a satiny finish, a light peach color. And my last blush would be the It Cosmetics CC Radiance Ombre Blush in Je Ne Sais Quoi, which is like a warm pinky peach color. So those are all the blushes that I am going to be wearing this season and I'm so excited because I love all these colors and these formulas and it's so, I know that these are similar shades but it's so hard for me to let go of them because this is like my favorite kind of blush. Next we have lipsticks. If you guys watch my seasonal makeup must-haves, you'll see how over the years I've got some of the same products but my tastes are changing slightly and they're getting a little bit more neutral which is kind of sad but I really just don't like pastel lip products that are too white based. I don't think it's as flattering on me and I feel like those can be a little bit harder to formulate. So these products here are ones that I do really enjoy. Some of these are products I do want to test more to see if I do want to keep them or not but they're a little bit more tame color wise than they have been previously. So I've got some warm peachy pink colors, peaches, and a couple blue tone pinks. So I'm going to show these to you 
in the order of bullet lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, then glosses. So for my bullet lipsticks, the first one would be my Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in Primrose. If you guys have been with me for years on my channel, you know that this was my Holy Grail lipstick. I did use one up in one of my first project pans ever, and I did get a backup tube from my friend Jean, and I do still think this is very pretty, and it is a little bit more sheer. It can be built up, which I love. That way it doesn't look too blue toned on me, and it's an amazing cream finish. Then I've got an Urban Decay Vice lipstick. This one is in the shade Criminal. It is a comfort matte finish, and this is a bit more of a warm pink, and it is a lot darker. It's a lot more pigmented, as you can see. And then the next one would be the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche lipstick in Meringue. This is the newest one to me, and I really like this. I think this will be a nice go-to because it is like a lighter warm pink but this is more neutral than the rest of these so it will definitely be the most wearable one and I know the word wearable is relative but then I've got one jumbo lip crayon this is the MAC patent polish lip pencil in the shade patent pink which is more blue tone I'll swatch that beside primrose you can tell that one is more purple it's a really nice pigmented color, a creamy finish. Then I've got a few liquid lipsticks. I've got some from Dose of Colors and Anastasia. So starting with the Dose, I have got the shade Bear With Me, which is something I never really thought I would like. It's a light pastel -y peach, but I ended up getting this in some free gift from Ulta and I really ended up enjoying it. So there's Bear With Me. Next, I've got the shade Lazy Daisy, which is kind of similar to, it's actually very similar to Meringue from Bite Beauty. So that one is a little bit more neutral. It's going to be a really easy color to wear with these more pastel eyeshadows. And the last one I have is Rosebud, which is a little bit more of a cool pink, but it is on the lighter side. Really beautiful. I love that one. Those are my three from Dose, and I have the two from Anastasia. I have got a lot of Anastasia liquid lipsticks. They have a lot of great colors, but it's not my most favorite formula, but I have several, and I do want to get use out of them. So the two shades that I've picked for spring would be Crush, which is a lighter, warm, neutral pink, and then we have Dolce, which is more of like a, a neon peachy color. This one looks very different than other people, and I don't love it as much on me, but I want to get use out of it. So here's Crush, and here is Dolce. Again, Crush is similar to Lazy Daisy to Bite Meringue, a good neutral shade that will be easy to get a lot of use out of. Then we've got glosses. So I've got two pink, three peach. So start with the pink glosses. The first is the Ofra Madison Miller Lip Gloss in the shade Sugar Cup. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this one formula-wise. So I'm going to use it more. It just kind of wears away really quickly, but it's a really pretty color. And then I'm going to show you it compared to the NYX Butter Gloss in Meringue, which is also blue pink. That I think is probably, yeah. Oh, wow. This is the first time I've swatched them side by side. There is a big difference. Ofra is obviously lighter, a little bit more wearable. This one is more intense. It has more pigment and it is more pink. Then for my three peachy glosses. The first one is NYX Butter Gloss in Mako Blondie. The NYX glosses are just so incredible. I'll show you the swatches after I've done all three of them. Then I've got the Buxom Full On Lip Cream in Cream Sickle. This is my favorite high-end gloss formula. I definitely like the creams more than the polishes because they don't have shimmer in them. And they have a great amount of pigment and shine. And the last ones I'm wearing today, I'm wearing this one with a lip liner. This is the ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in Easy Bake. This is from the Strawberry Shake Palette Collection. Okay, so here are the three swatches. This is NYX, Buxom, and ColourPop. So the NYX is more pink, the Buxom's more peach, and the ColourPop is definitely more neutral. So those are all of the lip products I plan on wearing this spring. And the last section we have is nail polish, and I have so many here, there is no way I'm going to be able to wear them all. So this is something where I definitely do want to edit this down. It's hard because I really do love all of these, but I don't need this many similar these many, what, this many? Oh no, 
I'm having a grammar problem. I don't need all these polishes, okay? I do not need them all, so it's gonna be really hard, but I have to narrow this down, so we'll work on it. Hopefully I don't put it off, we'll work on it. But I've got purples, baby blues, peaches, and mints are my four color categories. So for purples, I'm just gonna show them up, I'm not describing them to you, because they're all similar-ish. So this first one is from 90 Lacquer, which is an indie brand from Just Face 90. This is the shade June 2016. It's a holographic purple. Then I've got KL Polish Libra, which is more of like a pinky purple. It's a cream finish. It's a little bit similar to ColourPop First Wings First. ColourPop only had one nail polish collection. It was a spring collection and they let it go, even though these are these have a great formula. My friend Amanda sent these to me, so you can tell that this is paler than the KL Polish. Then we've got some more shifty colors. So this first one is 90 Lacquer Rainbow Wishes and KL Polish charm so you can see that the 90 has a little bit more blue in it and it's a paler purple base whereas the kale polish is a little bit darker of a purple base i'm glad to see that these are different i haven't tried them together or like side by side on the nails i definitely will have to but i really do enjoy both of those it's just really fun then i've got some classic creams i've loved for years <sighs> i might have to let this one go i've used up half the bottle which is crazy this is the sally hansen Extreme Wear in Lacy Lilac. It's I remember when I was obsessed with this when I was an undergrad, which was a long time ago, and that's so sweet. And then I've got OPI You're Such a Budapest, which is a periwinkle purple color. My gosh, oh, this is so hard. And then I've got a really fun one that my friend Amanda sent me. This is from Moonshine Manny, and it is called No More of That Dull Stuff, which is a really pretty lilac-y base with different colors of purple and blue glitters in it. Really pretty. Then we've got all my blue polishes. So we've got what I'm wearing on my nails today, which is from 90 Lacquer called Robin's Egg. I've got another 90 polish. This one is called Let It Rain. One of my favorites from Kale Polish, this is St. Clair perfect periwinkle blue color because it is really opaque unlike some others from Essie. Then I've got OPI I Believe in Manicures from the Tiffany's collection even though this is nowhere near Tiffany's blue it is not green enough but it's a basically just like a little baby blue. Then we've got Wet n Wild Wild Shine and Chambray Showers. I also remember when I was in love with this one. Oh this is so hard. And then I've got ColourPop Pixelated. Oh my gosh. I know I'm not decluttering in this video, but I'm just thinking about giving away these polishes. It makes me sad, but I, I'm not using them all. Then we've got my more peachy colors. So I've got, wow, this one's half used too. I'm impressed. This is Formula X Alive. It's a beautiful light peachy color. Then I've also got Stones and Roses from Essie, which is actually pretty opaque for an Essie polish. And then I have another Wet n Wild Wild Shine and Ferris Wheel Romance. So here's what they look like. Side by side, this one is the palest, this one is the most pink, and this one is the most peachy. Then I've got this random one from 90 Lacquer, which is almost kind of like a pinky rose gold. This is cottontail and when you apply it on the nails you see more of that pink base but as it settles in the bottle it looks a lot more gold but it's so beautiful then we've got my more minty polishes some of these are more blue mints some of these are more green mints but it's all minty 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 mint so here are two essays this one is where is my chauffeur i've used a lot of that one as well i absolutely love it then we also have blossom dandy so more blue more green and this one's more pastel it's lighter then i've got formula x legendary i do miss these polishes then i've got some another one from color pop this is dust a dream i've got this really pretty color that amanda gave me as well if you see any indie polishes in any of my videos that are not nine zero 
Kale polish or lights lacquer. My friend Amanda gave them to me. So this is pretty serious peace on earth, which I think is a dupe for a Chanel polish. It's a beautiful like opalescent jade color. And my last green is a lot brighter, a little bit more of a grassy green. It's a warmer green, a holographic polish from 90 lacquer called Budding. This spring collection that they released a few years ago was so incredible. So guys, woo! I know that was a long one. I'm so excited to use these products though. And who knows, as I use them, I might declutter some things along the way, which is always good to do, but I'm overwhelmed by the polishes. So I would love to know what your must-haves are for the spring season. Are you like a typical pastel bee like me or do you wear different things? I would love to know your thoughts on these products and your spring must-haves in the comments down below. Please make sure you go check out Steph's video and subscribe to her channel. If you came over here from Steph's channel, again, thank you so much for watching this video and I do hope that you will subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.